AMD's Ryzen line of CPUs are quite powerful chips at a nearly unbelievable price, and every single one has an unlocked multiplier, which means manual overclocking. Stay tuned. Welcome back to GamerMeld. Today I'm going to be showing you the easy way to overclock your new Ryzen CPU. Before we get started though, a quick disclaimer. I do not take any responsibility for anything that happens to your CPU when following this guide. Simply put, overclocking has its risks, and even if you do everything right, there's still a chance, however minute, that you could ruin your CPU. Plus, AMD makes it quite clear that this does void your warranty. Now, I don't say any of this to scare you. If everything is done correctly, it's extremely rare to have any major complications. Just ensure you have efficient cooling to compensate for the added heat overclocking brings to the table. But even then, things can go wrong. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get to it. For this, you're going to want to download and install a few programs. The first being Ryzen Master, which is a program made by AMD specifically to overclock your Ryzen-powered CPU. Next, you want to download Cinebench and Prime95, which are tools we're going to use to help us test our overclock. Note that I'll have the download pages for these linked in the description below. The last thing before I start explaining how all of this works, I just want to point out a couple of misconceptions about using Ryzen Master over, say, a BIOS overclock. The first is a negative. Basically, when you reboot your PC, Ryzen Master does not seem to keep your overclock. You have to pull the program up and activate it again. For a while, I thought this wasn't true, but even when overclocking the RAM and it forces a restart, when I restart again, it loses said overclock. The second misconception is that when overclocking your Ryzen CPU with a Ryzen Master, Windows isn't able to request P states, so the overclock is just stuck running at the maximum frequency and voltage you designate. This isn't really true, but it stems from a partial truth, kind of. According to AMD's own Ryzen Master Guide, it states while in overclock mode, the operating system can request lower voltage and clock speeds via P and C states. But then lower in the guide, it says that entering overclock mode keeps your frequency and voltages stuck. Through my testing, when you manually apply a voltage and clock frequency overclock, given a little time, you can see the voltage switching between the maximum set and another, which would be a secondary P state. Then the cores tend to do the same with each individual core. A BIOS overclock with P states may be slightly more efficient and offer more states, but I don't think it would make a huge difference. Either way, it is an option if your motherboard supports it. Okay, let's get into the program itself. Now that you've installed everything, make sure all your programs are closed and go ahead and open Ryzen Master. As you can see, before it opens, you get a warning that damages caused by going beyond the specifications of the CPU will void your warranty. You obviously have to agree to that and get into the program. Now let's go through the application and go over a few things. For starters, you can see down here at the bottom, it says C, 1, 2, 3, and 4. C is essentially an overview of what's going on with your CPU. It's not a default profile like some seem to think. It's read only because it's just letting you know what's happening at that moment. But 1 through 4 are actual profiles to set your settings. To the right of the numbers are your save profile and reset profile buttons, which are pretty self-explanatory. Above that are your memory controls, voltages, then the ability to disable cores, and finally individual core clock speeds. To the top right is the apply button to, well, apply the overclock. For those who don't know much about overclocking, I recommend Ryzen Master because it's quite a simplified way of doing it, which makes it great for beginners. In here, all you have to worry about is your temperature, CPU voltage, and clock speed. As you raise the clock speed, you'll need to raise the voltage to power it. So now that you understand how it works, let's talk overclocking Ryzen specifically. The first thing we want to think about is voltage. As AMD states in their guide, raising the voltage is the number one way to kill a CPU. So getting this number right and not overdoing it is smart. The first thing you want to do is check your BIOS or an application like CPU-Z to ensure it isn't adding an offset on your voltage and that the number Ryzen Master shows is the correct number. When it comes to the maximum voltage to use, it's tough to say for sure. When AMD originally sent out Ryzen kits, they seemed to tell early reviewers not to go over, say, 1.35 volts. Basically, if you kept it under this, there shouldn't be any major degradation or lifespan shortage of the chip. 
Since then, plenty of people do seem to suggest 1.4 volts as a nice spot, and even in the Ryzen Master Guide, the example they give sets the voltage at 1.4 volts. Luckily for us, plenty of power can be had by doing the recommended 1.35 volts, which is what I'll be using in today's example. To raise your clock speeds, either click on the up arrow here or simply drag one of the sliders. I wouldn't try to instantly go near 4 GHz or anything like that. Simply move it up incrementally with your voltage, testing it along the way. For this example, I'm going to set the voltage to 1.35 and the clock speed to a decent 3.8 GHz or 3800 MHz across all cores. After we set the parameters, click Apply. If something happens here, like your system gets an error, your screen goes blank, it crashes, etc., simply force the shutdown and turn it back on to adjust the numbers again. Once the overclock finally sticks, pull up Cinebench and run a simple CPU benchmark. AMD suggests closing everything for this test, but temps are very important here, so try to see if you can keep Ryzen Master open during this time. Watch your temperatures and check for any system stability issues. If all goes well, it's time to pull up our third program, Prime95. I'm sure many veteran overclockers may prefer using ADA64, but since Prime95 is free, we're going to be going with that. Basically, it has a very demanding CPU stress test by going to Options, Torture Test, and selecting Blend. Simply begin the test and leave it running for a few hours watching your core temps along the way. If the CPU doesn't get too hot or crash, you've probably got a stable overclock. Of course, it can crash during actual workloads, even if it doesn't during a more synthetic one, but this should be a decent enough test. As far as temperature, I wouldn't consider it a good overclock if it gets much higher than 80 degrees during your benchmarks. If it's getting too hot, lower your frequency and or voltage until you get better temperatures. Do this until you've found that sweet spot, which can be different for every CPU. So fingers crossed, overclockers. Here's to hoping you win the jackpot. While that does it for today's guide, let me know what clocks you were able to get down in the comments below. Also, if you liked the video and want to see more guides like this, give it a thumbs up and tell me what you'd like to see in the future. That does it for now. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the round icon in the middle. You can check out the most recent video and suggested video to the left. Thanks so much for coming, and as always, have a great day.